lucky to have uh, Barb Foss, uh, the sales manager from Polyform with us today. And uh, Barb, if you wouldn't mind uh, telling us a little bit about Polyform, please. Hi. Uh, we are grateful to be here and uh, very appreciating the new opportunity and uh, new experience uh, to uh, get our message out there. But uh, Polyform uh, is the worldwide leader in buoys and fenders. Uh, but the company goes back to the 1950s in Norway, where we actually invented the inflatable buoy and fender. Uh, so we have a little expertise in doing it and have perfected it over the years. Um, we are now a uh, separate entity from that company that was started in Norway. And we are here in the U.S. and we manufacture here in the U.S. And oh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. I remember meeting some of the original owners of Polyform at uh, some, some events a long time ago. And just such a nice family, great group of people. You know, always been an awesome company to work with. And uh, they, they just do a top shelf job. But, um, you know, so I appreciate you giving us a little bit of information there about Polyform. But when I'm working in open house and cons customers are coming in and chatting with me and asking them questions, inevitably the first question I get is always, what size fender do I need for my boat? What you need to under, we need to understand is what is the conditions for their moor, mooring or docking situation? Um, where are they? Um, is it, you know, in an ocean with high waves and tides? Is it in a lake with that's relatively calm? Uh, you're also going to need to understand what size boat that you have. So if you take a look at the conditions, uh, there is a specific spot on our website um, at polyformus.com and you, you go into the support section and then under that is a boat fender guide. And if you scroll to that, you can click on it. And if you look at the, the, the page, you will see the different conditions and the different series of fenders that might fit for your boat in that application. Then if you scroll down further, you can look up to your size of boat and determine then what size fender would fit your boat best. There's a couple of things that you want to be thinking about in terms of where your boat actually hits the pylon or the dock and that you need to make sure a fender is large enough to drop down and cover that area. Um, a lot of in our situation, uh, bigger is better. I know I'm not supposed to say that, but it really is important. And for uh, it's, think of it as just cheaper insulate insurance to ensure that you go up to the next level, pay a few extra dollars for that larger fender, but you know you're going to get the coverage that you need. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, Barb. So now, if we were, uh, you know, we've sort of picked out the fenders we want for our boat. We've got the size. You know, we're saying that you know bigger is better. We're saying that. Uh, you know, multiple fenders are always a good idea in case, you know, you have a problem with one. Uh, now, if we were talking about inflating the fenders, how, how do you go ahead and how, how do you inflate a polyform fender is another big question we get. What you can do when your fender is fully inflated, uh, you can just press on the side of it and it should indent about a half an inch, quarter of an inch, half an inch. Uh, you don't want any more than that. Otherwise, it's not fully inflated. And if it's too tight, that's not good either. You want it to actually have a little bit of give so that when the pressure of the two points coming together, it will actually do its job. Oh, very cool. Now, um, we got that down. You have a whole bunch of different types of fenders as people could see on your website. I they could go through and see all different sorts of choices. Um, but out of all those different fenders, one question we get a bunch is, what is the strongest fender you make? It's an easy one. Our strongest fender, is our F-series fender. And I am going to go low tech and show you pictures now since our other options aren't working. Uh, but it is a commercial grade fender and it is the strongest one we make with the thickest wall side or wall dimensions as well as a reinforced rope hold. Um, it's got multiple ribbing in it. The F-series fender is very, has a very definitive look and it, you can always tell by the navy um, toppers um, on each, each actually top and bottom. Uh, that makes it a little unique from the rest of our line. And uh, these are actually used by not only commercial boats, but also higher end boats. A lot of yachts are out there using the F-series. So 
that being said, if those are like your big high-end yacht fenders, what would be like a really popular fender uh, for like rafting if you're trying to, you know, tie up boat to boat? Rafting, it's a, a lot of fun and a lot of folks will use um, regular fenders and that works, uh, but the best fender is actually a buoy when it comes to rafting. And the, our A series is actually a buoy and it is best for rafting because it has the most standoff because of its spherical nature. Um, and it has it gives it a little bit of a uh, different shape to uh, expand and, and give a little bit more space for the uh, boats, particularly at the front and the back end of things. Okay, cool. And I can see that working out great. And then when we get to, uh, you know, just the, probably one of the other questions is what would be your best value? Like what's your best value fender? When you compare size and price over other fenders, the G series is our best. Uh, that one has a rib design, which creates a stronger fender and has great abrasion resistance as well. But other than that, they're all gonna perform uh, very uh, similarly. It has the reinforced um, heads as or, uh, rope holds and uh, that rib body is really a nice, uh, a different look. So you can kind of distinguish one from another. And I think I remember somebody teaching me along the way somewhere those rib fenders also break up the surface tension on the side of the hull a little bit. So the fender won't stick and slide out. It'll actually roll on the boat. Yes, that is actually, yes, that will do that same thing. And I, I think that's a, yeah, it's a great additional point to make. All right, so we got a few questions from the peanut gallery here. When is it time to replace my old fenders? It's a two-part question. And if there is a hole, can I patch it? That's twofold. Let me start with the first part, um, being that just as a, any plastic product, the fender is going to have some uh, stickiness that's going to start occurring as the product gets older. That was a great sign to show that it needs replacement. In addition, you can also keep an eye out on the rope hold. Um, that's going to show signs of, of weakening, um, thinning, uh, stretch marks or cracks will also be an indication that you need, something needs to be replaced. Um, if something is just dirty or abraded, you might just want to cover it up. And we have uh, elite fender covers that are available pretty much everywhere the poly, uh, polyform fenders are sold that will um, cover up um, all of that ugliness and uh, will make a very nice um, thing and they can actually be machine washable. Um, they are very strong and uh, water resistant and um, look great uh, as a part of the fender operation. That's great. So that, that answers one thing. The other part of it is um, a hole. If you get a hole or a cut slash something like that, those can't be fixed. Um, and, and that's, you're, you're done at that point. If you do just get a small puncture hole, those can be replaced and, uh, or can be fixed, not replaced, but fixed. And um, we recommend a product called E6000 that is available by a, a, Eclectic Products. Um, we don't sell it, um, but it is, there is a product out there on the market that can fix small puncture holes um, for the fenders. Thank you. But thanks for joining us today, Barb. That was a lot of good information. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. And basically send everybody to polyformus.com 